My name is George. For those of you who don't know me, I am currently a FANG software engineer and also doing a master's in machine learning at Georgia Tech. Previously, I've tried GitHub Copilot. We also have internal tools at work that allow us to use AI. But in this particular case, I want to talk about sort of the new AI powered workflow that I currently have using Cursor and how it has really increased my level of productivity and really building apps and helping me learn all of that really, really quickly. Let me open this up. Cool. So I have essentially this notion doc here that kind of talks about like what the high level system diagram looks like, what the front architecture will essentially look like at the start and the back end architecture and essentially the tech stack that I will be using. And it also talks about the end to end data flow. Now, previously, when I first started working on this project last week, I thought that that would be sufficient to get me started with using cursor. But what I found later on is, is that cursor Claude code, they're not very good at handling like very big requests. So if you give like all those screenshots all at the same time, along with the design doc, it's not going to be able to do it all in one go. And you start kind of getting sidetracked and it starts kind of making mistakes in terms of the things that you actually wanted to do. So instead, what I found was super, super helpful is if you can break it down into very clear tickets. So that's essentially the next part of my workflow, which is I asked ChatGPT to break it down into typical tickets that I thought made sense. For example, project bootstrapping, uh, setting up your structure, doing any workspace installs, doing all that stuff, You're setting up your workspace. All of those things I think is a pretty good first ticket. Then setting up your database, doing basic tests, pinging into your database, making sure that that, that works doing the remote recording screen skeleton, adding the stub, doing the API, doing any of the error handling. And then all the way down the line, I have tickets. And essentially, I have that initially, and then I have full tickets that essentially talk about the overview, goals, scope of the tasks, things like that. And this is all written by ChatGPT. And the key thing here, in my opinion, is having a very good acceptance criteria. And the reason I say that is in the beginning, when I was trying to code and do all of this, I was really trying to understand what cursor was trying to do, like reading through the old messages here and trying to figure out exactly the code that cursor was doing. But then what I realized was that as soon as I started auditing the code or reading line by line, I became the bottleneck. I was really slow. I had to take away my mindset as a engineer at work, which is I look through every single line, make sure everything is good to go. And even though I rely on AI sometimes to give me suggestions, I try to make sure every line is written properly. Whereas here, when I'm developing on my own, I put full trust into the AI to do exactly what I wanted to do. And honestly, the main reason for that is, is that first of all, if the ticket is detailed enough, cursor can do it from my experience thus far. And the second part is that it is a huge bottleneck. If you have to review the code on your own, it's just going to take forever for you to like do your project. Whereas now a lot of people are like shipping out pull requests like every single day, doing it super, super quickly. And that's sort of been my experience thus far. So a couple of ways that I ensure that cursor is actually doing the right thing is one, having that acceptance criteria. Two, I end up having it, and I don't really know if this is too, too valuable. I let Cursor write unit tests as well to make sure that it's actually doing what it's supposed to in terms of what I want to look like. So if you look at sort of the previous messages, for example, I wanted it to create like a home screen, right? On the right side, if you haven't used cursor before, this right side is sort of the agent and essentially it's what you talk to it with and then it then can like edit your directory, things like that. Um, what I've accomplished in my most recent ticket is, is that now I have a full recording flow. I'm able to display these um, records, especially the API, I can pull the refresh and do all those things. And I have these screens now and I can actually even do a quick demo for you to show you that it works. So I'm just going to do MPX Expo start. And let me just do a screen recording. Basically, I can scan this QR code and I could also use the iOS simulator or Android to do it, but typically I just do it on my phone. And basically now I have a demo of it on my phone. I already have a pretty functional, basic bare bones skeleton UI of how I want this flow to work. Basically, you click on new recording here, you start the recording. So essentially here, this is a test recording of my AI transcriber app. I stop the recording here 
and then it says the recording is complete, then you can see in the logs here that this has already be, been sent to my Superbase bucket. And when I refresh here, the new recording will pop up here. And if I go to then, and then I essentially validate this by going into my storage. And then if you go into audio recordings, all of my previous audio recordings are saved here. So I already have something pretty basic working in terms of the front end. Still need to do some of the back end, but it already can add recordings to my database. And this has all been done in a matter of like one or two days of work. I think one of the key differences that I have compared to my AI workflow before is really having a detailed ticket description and then letting AI do that. Another thing I want to quickly mention is that previously I have all of my commits here and pushed to master and the commit message description would be something that talks about essentially what I did. But what I found has been really nice is for example here, I sometimes don't know what cursor has done or I might forget what cursor has done to fix some of the challenges. And what I have in the commit message instead, which I found really nice to review things I've done, is it talks about the major challenges that it resolved, it talks about the technical fi fixes, and it talks about the features implemented as well as the acceptance criteria. This is super useful for me to review historically the things that Cursor has done. And in addition to that, it gives me an idea of the things that Cursor actually struggles with. For example, Cursor is still not very good with dealing with version conflicts. Like for example here, apparently we need to use SDK version 53 and that was having some issues initially for me. And then I had to deal with a lot of some of the Metro bundler errors which is kind of funny because at work, we deal with version conflicts a lot. We have so many packages and these packages pull different versions and then you have to like run commands so that they end up um, having using the same version, dealing with version conflicts. It becomes a huge problem when you're dealing with a huge project that has like a bunch of projects. And it seems like Cursor does struggle with some of these similar challenges. And then Another issue that I kept running into is Superbase has these like ROS policies, which essentially is basically you need to have like a user ID and it has these like criteria before you can like write to the table or do anything and like um, upload things into your bucket. And previously I haven't really done that much backend with Superbase in the past. So we essentially bypassed this for development by proxying uploads through a Next.js API route using a service role key, which to me, I tried to essentially ask ChatGPT and Gemini to make sure that that is the right way to go. And it sounds pretty legit. So that's sort of the method I'm doing currently before we have user logins or have, I mean, currently I do have a user login, but what I mean is like before we've like properly validated the user login and set that up fully. So far, what I haven't had an issue with is it's still able to read through everything in my directory because I don't have so many files at the moment. At work or with bigger projects, however, I find that because the context window is limited, you need to point to the specific uh, to the specific files you wanted to edit. And sometimes it doesn't have enough context to be able to edit things properly, where in those cases, you have to go in and sort of code it yourself because it doesn't have that historical context. I haven't run into that in my personal projects so far. But I've heard that for Claude code, it takes a lot more time to read through the directory to plan out what it wants to do. And it actually does that very, very well. I just haven't spent the $200 to pay for Claude code, but I've heard it is much better than Cursor and it doesn't make as many mistakes. That's basically my current workflow with Cursor. So I'll continue to give updates through my blogs as well as through recordings like this.